graphics. So, uh, Larry, you're a good guy to start with. Uh, okay. Zach was about 10 years old, right, when you first saw him. A kid who was maybe as tall as his bag. What do you remember about those things? Well, I remember them like they were yesterday. Um, I really do. I would like to, you know, tell you about all the bad stuff that Zach did, but to be honest with you, he really didn't. He was a model kid. You really were. <laughs> um, but he was uh, somewhat slight. You know, not the biggest kid, and uh, you nobody. Know, he, he ran with a group of about eight guys, and they would come out and play golf every day, and they would gamble a little bit in the morning, and then they'd head on down to the pool and they'd hang out in the pool for a while. And before they went home, they came back up to the uh, putting green, did a little chipping and putting, and I think a little bit more gambling. But <laughs> Zach was, um, you know, he was a very confident young man, and you know, I, in my years of experience, there's only been a few that at that young age have the confidence to just walk right into my office and sit down and, and have a adult conversation, you know, back and forth. And usually when they're that young, you know, they're maybe a little bit intimidated and that'll come a little bit later in life. But Zach, uh, at a very young age, was very comfortable walking right into the golf shop and we had a lot of conversations. Sometimes it was about golf. Uh, a lot of times it was about sports in general. He's such a sports nut. I mean, back then when he was 10, I, I think he was confused between whether he was going to be in the NFL or the NBA. <laughs> kind of came to golf. But anyway, he was a great kid as a young man. Zach, uh, what do you remember about uh, those young days? Uh, you did play a lot of sports. What was it about golf that kind of stuck with you? Well, again, it does seem like yesterday in a lot of respects. Uh, you know, it's, it's looking back on it, uh, I mean, Larry nailed it uh, in all senses. I mean, it, you know, I love sports. still do. Uh, probably sometimes too much or to a fault. I like to that one. Um, but I, it's just it's just my nature. It's just the way I'm wired. I love competition. You know, fortunately, golf is my outlet for competition. That's really the bottom line. I think you know it's not it's, it's not any secret. Golf picked me. I mean, I'm, without you know, elaborating it, it, that's what happened. I mean, I would have rather probably have played basketball or soccer. Or, Really, my football days are numbered, but uh, you know, I just thoroughly I love team sports. Um, even though golf was, you know, certainly a more individual uh, endeavor, but uh, yeah, I mean, golf golf picked me. And the, the love was immediate. You know, when my folks uh, joined on Crest, and Larry was a young pro uh, then, and just put put together a great junior golf program, and, and the love was immediate. Uh, I just loved what it demanded. I mean, it still did. I mean, it, 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 I'm still. I mean, I think that's the beauty of the game. A lot of you individuals know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and there, you know, the comfort level, as Larry alluded to, was comfortable because it was him. You know, he he he's the one that uh, I can't give him enough recognition. I mean, he, he's the one that provided that environment for young kids to grow and to love the game and certainly to learn. Um, but then also just to have fun. I mean, that's you know, in your summers in the state of Iowa. You know, you know our golf season is limited, but I mean those those, those three months in the summer in particular, uh, they were long. And they were great, and it's because of Elm Crest, it's because of certainly what Larry's done there um, and continues to do. I mean, the, the, the list of individuals he's gone on to take golf to new heights and further, uh, whether it's you know as, as, a, as a reason to get more education or whatever. I mean, it, it's pretty remarkable, and uh, I, mean, I was just one of them. So. Uh, it's a great club, and, and, and Larry is, you know, Larry is on the press call, so I, I'm very grateful for that. So, uh, Jamie Burble sees something in you and brings you to Drake University. If you're a senior, Neil, and you're a freshman. What do you remember about this guy? Did you look at him and Well, think, yeah, once I turned down Oklahoma State, and I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, it, was, it wasn't much of a choice. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, what was your question? I'm asking Neil. Neil, what do you remember about you? Well, so, I'm, I'm global. I went to Irvindale, so I knew, as a senior at Irvindale, you know, Drake was coming off their, their great season. They went to the Nationals that year. Um, and so, that was when Jamie came and asked me to come to play on the team, it was like, yeah, Drake, Drake was one of my schools academically. Golf was secondary. For me, and so I show up, <laughs> and 
here at, at SAG and, and, and Ben Pettit, who's here somewhere. And, uh, just these two guys that are they're, they're great. And, uh, we go, and we, we talk about Zach's fierce competitiveness. And, uh, you know, I remember as a freshman, yeah, and we, get, we go down to the <laughs> so, we made we made NCLA's up there, and we're down in San Antonio, and we have all the schools that was just talking about Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Texas, all these schools, and I'm wide-eyed, and there's Brad Elder, there's Charles Howell the third, and I'm just like, oh, and Zach looks at me and goes. We're here to beat these guys. No autographs this <laughs> session. <laughs> <laughs> it's just how he is. You know, he wants to beat everybody. And he was just awestruck. So. Well, well, Neil, when you, when you heard that uh, Zach was going to try professional golf, what was your first thought? <laughs> kind of a laugh, probably. <laughs> I mean, he was outstanding, and, and uh, his. You know, the talent was there, but it was, to me, it was always the six inches between the years. It was just his mindset. He uh, can go out and beat anybody, and he, he truly believes that. And uh, I think that's what makes a big difference. So, so uh, Pat, you, uh, you hear, I know uh, there are a lot of famous stories about how Zach's mom and dad thought he was nuts for trying to throw They wanted him to use that business degree, and uh, you never will never know, but... Uh, Oh, yeah, <laughs> business management. Yeah. So, a uh, group of a couple dozen investors get together. And Larry said their goal was to not to make money, their goal was to help a young man chase his family. Well, I found a quote from you, Pat. It's, uh, it's a great quote. And it says, You said, Emotionally, all of us were hopeful he'd make it. Intellectually, there were not a lot of us who thought this kid was going to be on the PGA Tour. <laughs> <laughs> kind, of go, kind of go back, though, and, and that moment, you know, help, helping a kid out, really, that, that was a Well, I, and I think it was just a matter that Zach certainly was chasing a dream. And I think we all lived a bit vicariously through Zach thinking, man, if we would have ever had that chance, wouldn't it be nice to be able to go out and give it a chance? see if you can really do this, and eventually you'll come to your senses and get a job. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but anyway, it was, uh, it, it was really fun, and, you know, and the progression of the process, I think, was, was the thing that, that meant the most to the Elmcrest people and the people that were investors, because it just kept getting better and better and better, and it was like, what is going on here? This guy is going to make it. And, uh, I remember the elation that we had when we finally got his PJ to work hard. We had to see that baby and, uh, and see what that really looked like. So it worked very hard. Everybody thought when we won the Masters it was kind of magic overnight success. And then, uh, you know, it was only six or seven years of hard work as a professional to get there. So it was, it was just one of those uh, opportunities that you rarely have. And uh, we, I just feel good that we had an opportunity to, uh, to be a small part in the success it's had. Uh, now, the first two years saw progress. And then 2000, I think nationwide tour was a tough year. Like 11 events, missed seven cuts, and uh, you went you went back to your investors though, and you had a meeting, and you were you were really down. And, and someone said we're going to have Christmas. And we're going to have Christmas whether you had a great year or not. We're all fine. Yeah. We're in for another year, so don't be down. No, I mean well, yeah, there was there was a lot that went on, a lot of community dialogue that went on during that meeting. I mean, I remember. You know, at that point, I didn't understand it. I'll tell you right now, that was probably by far the best year of my career. I mean, certainly it wasn't from a statistical standpoint. Um, you know, I mean, up until that point, I think I pretty much paid everybody back in full. Every year, and, and you got a you dividend know, here. <laughs> <laughs> a little Christmas cash, but five out of six, thank you. Uh, but that year was the one year they did not. And But for me, personally, it was, uh, it was tremendous. Um, Right, but two, um, <laughs> no, but, no, 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 but no, it, it, it was a year where, you know, I played the mini tours prior to that, and only for essentially a year and a half, right? Um, and I won a couple of tournaments in the Midwest and that kind of thing, and, you know, I was living in Florida in the winter for obvious reasons, and, 
improving and trying to own the craft, but that 2000 season, yeah, I played a lot of 12, 13 terms, whatever it was. Um, I made the last four or five guys think of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I really under, started to understand and, and more or less, I think, uh, you know, uh, put together a really good formula for how to get better at the game of golf. I mean, I understood what it took on and off the course. I mean, it, it's a, you know, obviously the nationwide is the grooming tour by kind of wherever it was by then, for the PGA Tour, and, and up until that point, you know, I, I played anything like that, you know, and I'm playing against guys that one run the PGA Tour, one on the PGA Tour, ironically, and sadly enough, some I mean, major champions, too. So, I mean, it was, you know, it was, a, it was a year where I really started to understand, okay, that I'm going to take this seriously. I'm going to make some changes. And I started, you know, I started working with another Hall of Fame uh, honoree and, and like that at the time too. So, um, you know, the foundation was being laid, and that was one, that was one of those uh, years where I think one of the pillars of the foundation was really was signed. So. so we go a couple years later. You're nationwide then player of the year. You don't want to talk about the Bruce Turner? No, no, we'll skip <laughs> and, and then, uh, so you're a rookie and. Uh, Go to the Bell South Classic where he played good as a qualifier before you were on the tour. And uh, yeah, if not for a tough last screen, you would have been in the top 10. But you still finished the top 20. So that probably gave you some confidence. But you, sure. you, you win there. It's like, uh, has everything changed? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, there's, there's certainly some things that changed. Um, uh, the things that changed certainly were well, security. I mean, I, was, I had a job for two more years. <laughs> you know, I mean, I was on the PGA Tour for two years, guaranteed, and with, with winning any PGA Tour tournament, there's, there's status levels involved there. Um, you know, I, but I think the biggest change, uh, if anything, that year was just the realization that I want to go on. Uh, and two, whatever, whatever I've got going on, off the golf course, you know, obviously a wife, no kids, but a wife, that, you know, with me every step of the way. And then a, a team of coaches at that time, it was kind of small, but it's working. Um, why change? You know, I mean, that, that's the thing that didn't change, but also what I think uh, was magnified. Um, yeah, and from there we polished and we grew, but I mean, I'm still 17 years. I mean, there's a reason, there's a reason why uh, it hasn't changed, and I'm thankful that it does for a lot of my peers. <laughs> so, so, Larry, I think you watched the final round in your pro shop, as I recall. He said there was an awful, awful lot of high fiving going on and a few tears. It was a great day for Zach and a great day for golf in Iowa. What, what do you mean a great day for golf in Iowa? Just because we're a state that, you know, cold weather state, we don't have a million guys on tour. Is that what you kind of meant? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Zach has given the state of Iowa an identity for the PGA Tour. And, you know, all of Iowa, you know, whether they're golfers or not golfers, are paying attention to it. And at the time, you know, Zach was the only Iowa now. So uh, for him to have, you know, success on the PGA Tour, much less a championship, was huge. And, you know, at that time, we could kind of feel that this was the start of something that was going to get really good. Because every year Zach's played golf, since he was a little squirt, uh, he's gotten better. And that has never stopped. He's still getting better, you know. So, yeah, you know. But uh, so anyway, it was, uh, it, was, it was a great day. There was the, the Bell South, there was a, a large group of members that went down. and. Um, they asked me to go with them. And I had work. <laughs> <laughs> Juniors, yeah. But after that happened, I told myself that would never happen again. Because I mean I really wanted to be there. And uh, you know, a couple years later you know, the screen jacket down with Dustin and I did make it down with that. So that was good. So Pat, you watch uh, this young man who starts winning on the tour. And uh, well, all the investors kind of put their chests out a little more, like, you know, hey, look, look what we, we did. did. Look what we did at this <laughs> game. <laughs> no, but just watching him, seeing him have great success, and probably overachieving from what a lot of people expect. What was that like as someone who put your faith in at the start? Well, you know, and I think we all took great, great pride in, in what Zach was doing, and more importantly, the way he was doing it. Um, uh, I called Julie after he won the Masters and said, you know, really proud of the way Zach played golf. But I'm really proud of the way he acted when he won the master. I think that was a more important piece of the puzzle. So, um, you know, it started a, uh, um, 
a relationship with not just the investors and not just the people at Elmcrest, but with the community. And uh, he is still a really popular guy in Cedar Rapids, I Iowa. Mean, everybody wants a piece of him, and uh, I think that's what helps make our tournament so successful, is everybody wants to be there, and, and they want to be a part of Zach, and they want to be where Zach's at. So it's June 27th, if anybody needs tickets, um, they are free, so don't worry about that. So, so Neil, what, uh, do you remember that last round of the 2007 Masters? Were you around? Were you watching it on TV? Were you, remember that? This is tough. Uh, I was actually out of town. I was up uh, visiting my in-laws. Uh, I think it was, was it Easter. It was Easter. Easter. And we were up, uh, and I was on the way home. We were driving, and uh, we had Sirius or XM, XM going with the coverage. And I, the, the one I remember was, you're on 16, and you know I've been down to Augusta, so I kind of, I'm pretty familiar with, with some of the layout. And the announcer goes, "Oh, Zach's, Zach's tee shot's center of the green and it's drawn." And I, I turned to my wife and I was like, "It's going to be good. It's going to be good. That's right where you want to go." And sure enough, it was I don't know, 10, 15 feet. And then when you made the putt, I was like, "Oh, and that!" And I started speeding up. And <laughs> <laughs> I get home, and I think I, I think I got home just in time to see him chip down 18 so it was yeah it was just awesome you know uh going back to atlanta when you were in bell south when you were, uh, ken shaw was your coach your senior year right Kenny, right senior year and uh so i was calling around a few people get some reaction he said something right. so so larry when you when you watch one of your kids your pupils have so much success at a high level I sense it's more gratifying that, at least it's been for me covering this guy, it's more gratifying the fact that he's the same guy now that you knew as a 10 year old and I knew as a kid in high school. He hasn't changed one bit. You know, as uh, after Zach won the Masters, I think he was on the microphone and he said, I'm Zach Johnson from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And that made every Iowa proud. I know it did me. <laughs> but uh, he has not changed. And when he went out on the PJ Tour, he made it very clear that he wasn't going to change, even though. His peer group were very big names, people that we all watch on TV and admire. They were going to be just Zach's peers, and it wasn't going to change him one iota, and it hasn't. He's still the same guy he was when. So, Pat, where were you when uh, Zach won the Open Championship? Were you, uh, it was a Monday finish, remember? And, uh... Well, I would say, number one, that it was the least productive day in the history of Cedar Rapids. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that day, I had a bank board meeting in my law when you're a bank board, you go to bank board meeting. So I'm in the bank board meeting, looking at my phone, getting texts from my son and my daughter about every three minutes. So it was, you know, it, uh, it was just so exciting. And one of the guys says, I'm taping this, I don't want you to hear it. I said, okay, I'll just try to be real quiet about what's happening here. But it, was, it was, I mean, it was, it was sort of like, the Masters all over again, and you know the pride that you take in, in what he's doing and the way that he's doing it was just it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal day. But uh, 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 the whole community, everywhere you went, it was the only thing people talked about for a week afterwards was Did you see what and everybody obviously was watching TV because nobody could have been working. So Neil, if uh, someone would have said to you when you were a teammate, Greg. This guy's going to win a Masters and an Open Championship. Who would you tell him? Crazy. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, he, he always had that uh, ability to go low. Uh, you know, he had the ability to go high. <laughs> he did. But, yeah. uh, but he could just, he could, it, it, it had another gear. Uh, it, it, you just turn it on and, and you go. But you go deep, and it was that dang putter. You, you, you know, even in practice, you're playing, and oh, I got in this hole. No, oh, he, 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 stupid putter, man. It just makes everything. Still do. But yeah, it, yeah. I mean, it, it, you're surprised to the level that he has done, but you're, you're not surprised because you, know, you knew he could. You know, you knew he could do it. It's just what do you do? So Larry, at Zach's uh, event last year, the foundation event, you and I are standing on the practice range in Elmcrest. Did you 
Jordan Spieth is hitting balls. Next to him is Jason Day. We got Davis Love the third. We got Zach. So we had all four major champions on your range, same time, about a 25 foot, 30 foot square. How cool is that? Uh, you know that was uh, that was a dream. You know, you know that day we had. The reason that happened is we had a big rain delay. And we had about a two, three hour rain delay, something like that. And so when, once we got the players, it kind of kind of threw everything in a little bit different situation. Some of the spectators went home, some of them stuck around. It was completely different than what it would have been. So before the shot then started, all the players went out to warm up. And I just happened to be walking towards the range with Rick, and all of a sudden, there they are. We both got our phones out and our video and everything else, because this is like a dream come true right here. The four major champions were hitting balls right in front of us. So it was a pretty special day. Uh, I'd like Pat to talk about Zach's foundation and just the progress you've made, what you're trying to accomplish, and how proud you are of the way the community has helped Zach support this and help kids in the Cedar Rapids area. And I think if, if we go back six years, is, six years ago we started the foundation. Uh, prior to that, Kevin Zach had Birdies Get Care and, uh, and adopted a, a, a charity in town every year. Uh, Zach and Kim decided they wanted to do more, uh, so we started the foundation and uh, uh, developed a program called Kids on Course, uh, which was something completely new. We didn't want to reinvent the wheel. We didn't want to compete with anybody that was there. We wanted something that was meaningful, where we could help kids that didn't otherwise have opportunities to succeed. We think maybe there's another Master Champion or another Super Bowl Champion or somebody else out there that just needs an opportunity. We started in uh, two elementary schools in one grade. We had about 60 kids in the program the first year. Uh, if you fast forward to this year, uh, we have about 800 kids uh, in five schools in the program. In addition to that, this summer we will have 750 kids for a full six week summer school program, kids who are uh, uh, deficient in reading, particularly, and they have to be more than a year behind in reading before they even qualify for the program. So there's a serious reading problem in Iowa and in this country, I believe, and uh, we've come to the conclusion that kids can't read, they really can't succeed. So uh, we'll have 750 kids, uh, they'll go to school five days a week from 8.30 in the morning to 1.30 in the afternoon, we'll feed them two meals, we'll provide transportation for them, we'll have uh, 